Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm Four One Nine Seven Five, and today we're going to see how fast the police can actually go down our rally course. <laughs> So welcome back to the rally series guys, I hope you are all having an amazing day today and we're going to see what we can actually do here with the Ford um, Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. I thought since we had the Ford Julie in the last episode we'd go ahead and take another Ford today and when I was looking through the list of Fords available in the game this one caught my eye. Now, so far, the DeLorean DMC-12 in ninth place is our fastest two-wheel drive vehicle with a 216. So, a couple of episodes ago, we took the Gremlin and attempted to beat the DeLorean's time. And sadly, we were unsuccessful. So, today, I want to take the um, Crown Victoria and see what we can actually do do with it so let's go ahead and upgrade the vehicle we're going to do some engine swaps in this thing now if you haven't seen this series so far all the vehicles are upgraded to s1 class and must keep their stock drivetrain that means the crown victoria is going to remain rear wheel drive and then the vehicles will have three attempts to go down the rally course and put down their best time now the thing starts off in d class I want to go ahead and upgrade this to S1 class. So I'm wondering what the best engine to put in here. We start off with 250 horsepower and 297 foot-pounds of torque. The thing weighs just under 2 tons. So it's quite a heavy vehicle for its size. Uh, so we want something quite torquey. I'm thinking the 8.4 V10 out of the Viper might be a good shout. That puts us almost up into B class. Um, the vehicle can be upgraded with all-wheel drive, but as per the rules of the series, we must keep it rear-wheel drive. Now, aspiration, I think we're going to have to do some kind of aspiration upgrade in here to get it up into S1 class. So, I'm going to go ahead and fit it with two twin turbos today. Now, aero parts, we are not limited on what aero parts we want to go for, but I'm going to actually do a bit of a police build on this thing. Um, since it is basically a police car, we're going to make it look as much like a police car as we can. Now, all the vehicles are fitted with the off-road tyre compound, formerly known as the Rally Tyre Compound, if you played Forza Horizon 4. Uh, some of the vehicles can be fitted with the off-road race tyre compound. That's the only option they have, so they have a slight advantage. Uh, but all the vehicles that have the Rally Tyre compound option will be fitted with that and we're going to keep the vehicle wheels stock we've got these nice light steel wheels anyway so i don't really want to add any weight on there now we can go ahead and increase the rear track width that's going to give us a bit more stability but i'm actually going to leave it um, because it's not terrible to begin with we'll go ahead and upgrade the tire width as well then we'll go into the drivetrain options. We'll upgrade the clutch and the transmission. I want something like that. The race transmission six speed will do the job. Then we're going to go ahead and slap in a rally diff. It is a rally course, a rally series. So rally diff is going to be the way to go. Now the vehicle all already has quite a sort of floaty suspension on it. Um, Crown Victorias are also used as taxis, so they ride quite well as well. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and put the thing on off-road springs and dampers. We don't get much of a lift because the thing already sits quite high anyway. Um, but that is going to allow us to do a little bit of tuning on the suspension. Now, with full weight reduction, we lose almost half a ton, actually just over half a ton, uh, in weight uh, actually sorry no just under half a ton in weight that's going to bump us up into s1 class 
And then with some engine upgrades, let's see. Uh, stock, we are 761 horsepower, 714 foot pounds of torque. Um, I'm not going to go balls to wall crazy because I'm actually quite happy with that figure, but we need a little bit more PI. Um, when I started this series, I said the vehicles had to be the top of S1 class, but some of the vehicles just physically cannot get there with even with uh, max upgrade. So I've sort of changed that rule a little bit and it's now just sort of mid pack S1 class. Um, so I'm actually not going to upgrade the turbo um, because that's going to bump up the horsepower quite a bit. Now you might be thinking, well, surely more horsepower is better. But this series is all about the battle of traction. And the more horsepower you have, the less traction you have, especially in a rear wheel or front wheel drive vehicle. Now, 900 horsepower is not a small amount of horsepower. This thing is going to be wheel spinning quite a lot, but it does weigh about a ton and a half. So it's quite a heavy vehicle for its size. Um, and my theory is... Crown Victorias are quite reasonably well handling vehicles. I mean, they are used by the police and also as taxis, so um, they wouldn't use them if they were no good. So that's kind of my theory with this one. We'll see how it pans out. I'm going to go ahead and paint the vehicle and tune it a little bit, and I'll see you guys when we get to the rally course. Okay, here we go for round number one in the police interceptor. Uh, Ford Crown Victoria. Let's see what we can do. Now, I've got to remember that this thing is rear-wheel drive, so we can't go too crazy, but I am hoping that this week we will be able to beat the DeLorean's time. Lights on the top are actually a little bit annoying, um, but we can deal with that. That's not an issue. Now, I'm going to try and keep this thing in a little bit higher gear to try and... Uh, stop it wheel spinning as much now we found that the right hand side of that puddle there is a little bit shallower and you can actually pick up a little bit of time in something like this that is a little bit lighter than the sort of off-road vehicles i mean it's still not a light vehicle but in terms of vehicles that have run this course so far it is a lot lighter uh, now the thing is uh, struggling a little bit. It sounds amazing with the uh, with the Viper V10 in there, um, but it is literally wheel spinning even at half throttle. Like if you go anywhere near the throttle, the uh, the Victoria is spinning its tires. Now, what do we want for the hairpin here? Maybe third, I think, through here. A little bit of a drift, but nothing terrible. This is going to be more of a shakedown run, I think, in Ford. Just to sort of see what we can get away with and what we can't. Um, we're a little bit wide on the grass through here. But that actually can be a bit of a faster racing line. We've seen some of the other vehicles pick up a little bit of time on that section. Now coming up the hill we're barely hitting 90 miles an hour. The, uh, the Super Duty in the last episode was cresting there at almost 120 miles an hour. And uh, the Victoria struggling a little bit, but it is rear-wheel drive. The Super Duty was all-wheel drive, so it's a bit like comparing pineapples and oranges. Um, but let's see what we do through these last couple of corners here. We've surpassed the 210 mark already, so this is going to be quite a slow run, actually, for its first run. Um, that was the DeLorean's time there, 2.16, and that is actually our slowest time beaten there uh, in the Volvo 850R. So we're going to have a little bit of work to try and get the Crown Victoria to a respectable time. The slowest time so far is the Volvo 850R, which is in 14th place with a 2.24. So I'd like to at least beat that. But I was quite confident this thing might beat the DeLorean. Um, the DeLorean was just incredibly, incredibly good off-road. Um, I'm not quite sure why it was so good. Um, but yeah, let's see what we can do in the next couple of runs. 
Okay, here we go for round number two. I'm not going to spin the tires quite as much off the line. We're just going to get it rolling on the tarmac. Now, this thing is struggling quite a lot on this tarmac section. It's all over the road. It has that much torque from that Viper V10 that it's spinning the wheels in almost every gear. And I have completely overshot that corner. That is actually going to void the uh, second run in the victoria we've only had one other vehicle that has been void and that was in the pontiac firebird in i think the third episode um but yeah that actually only leaves us with one more run uh in the victoria i'm gonna have to try and get it slowed down earlier this time and see what we can do all right here we go for round number three in the Crown Victoria. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Hopefully this time I will hit that checkpoint. It is a little bit unfortunate that the second run got void. I've only voided one run so far in this series and that was in the Pontiac Firebird in the third episode and we actually hit a tree on the hairpin so hopefully we don't hit any trees on this attempt. Now the Victoria is only really going to get two attempts then to beat the time. Um, but unfortunately, that's just how the rules of this series work. If we make a balls up on one of the runs, then that run is void. It gets three runs, and that is the top and bottom of it. Now, let's see what we can do coming into these couple of corners. We usually tend to get quite a lot of drifting going on in these two corners here. I'm not quite sure why. It might be just the angle of the road and uh, the, the rear wheel drive vehicles obviously get a lot more tail end happy. Now coming down this section, let's see how Victoria soaks up the bumps. Actually, it's not great down there. I thought it would be a little bit better. It's bouncing around quite a lot. Um, it's getting a little bit skittish, to be honest. Now coming into the hairpin, we want a third gear through there. A little bit of wheel spin. I'm only going like literally a third throttle not even half throttle and we are spinning the tires so this thing is quite uncontrollable in that department but in other departments it's actually not too bad it does go sort of where you point it now let's see if we can at least increase the mile an hour up the hill here 96 at the crest that's not too bad um, that sort of mid-packed vehicles are hitting about 90 96 miles an hour up there as well so not too slow um but some of the faster vehicles are hitting 120 30 miles an hour cresting the hill up there but obviously they are all-wheel drive so it is a little bit unfair comparing rear wheel drive vehicles to all-wheel drive vehicles but that is how rally is uh, is done in real life look at the 037 versus the audi quattro now let's see what we can do down the hill. Can we at least beat our previous run? We do by two seconds, a 228.482. But that is going to put the Crown Victoria in last place. That's actually going to be 15th place for the Crown Victoria. That is the slowest vehicle we have taken down this rally course. Not actually the slowest time we've ever had. Um, some of the first and second attempts of previous vehicles have been slower than that um, but it is actually the slowest official time that will go on the leaderboard but let's actually go to the leaderboard and have a little look how the victoria racks up well there we have it guys that was the run in the crown victoria unfortunately all my productions for this vehicle were sort of a little bit out um it was actually our slowest vehicle that has gone down the rally course so far it's going to put the crown victoria in a 15th place a 228.482 actually four seconds behind the volvo 850r it was a lot more controllable than the Volvo 850R. With uh, with a bit more practice, I think the Interceptor could actually creep up the leaderboard a little bit. Uh, the Volvo, being front-wheel drive, had quite a lot of understeer going on. Um, the Victoria 
was a little bit more controllable just because it was rear wheel drive but you couldn't even go near the throttle every time i was going near the throttle it was just spinning the tires like crazy so unfortunately that is a little bit disappointing i would have liked to seen this vehicle a little bit higher up the leaderboard i thought it might be the delorean's time but unfortunately it wasn't even close it was actually almost 22 seconds behind the delorean um but there we go that leaves us another attempt in the future to try and beat the delorean's rear wheel drive lap time uh, but that's going to do it for the crown victoria hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did it'd be awesome if you could smash the like button and subscribe if you are enjoying the series and if this is just the first episode you've seen of the series and you want to see more then make sure you go down in the description and check out the playlist i've created it has all the episodes i have made so far in there but that's going to do it for today's episode and I will see you guys in the next one.